Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, and today we're in the shop because we're gonna build one of these. It's the new K6ARK Mini End Fed Antenna Matching Unit Kit. I've put a bunch of these kits together and I've got them for sale now on Amazon. Check out the links in the description below. And I want to give you a video tutorial on how to build these things. I've got some really good instructions that you can find at www.k6ark.com. It's a constantly improving document with tons of great info on how to build your kit in any of the three ways you'd like, as an end-fed half-wave, as an end-fed random wire, or as a one-to-one -one ballon. Today, we're going to build it as an end-fed half-wave. So as you can see, we've got our kit here. We're going to need some tools to put this together. First and foremost, we're going to need a soldering iron. We'll need some solder to go with that. We'll need some wire cutters and some tweezers because we're going to be dealing with some small parts here. Next up, let's take a quick look at all of the components in the kit. Now there's some really small components in this bag, so be very careful when you open the bag up and make sure you don't lose that tiny little capacitor that's in there. So let's do a quick inventory of the kit items here before we get started. We've got the K6ARK portable radio sticker, the male BNC connector. This is a male kit. If you have the female kit, your BNC connector will look more like this. Got the custom PCB that makes this build notably easier. Our FT50-43 toroid, the 100 picofarad 500 volt capacitor, piece of small heat shrink tubing, about a quarter inch length of three quarter inch heat shrink tubing, about a three quarter inch length of three quarter inch heat shrink tubing, roll of 26 gauge magnet wire, some 26 gauge poly stealth here for our wire leads for the antenna, and a small piece of black plastic drip line tubing that we use as a form for a loading coil for the end-fed half-wave if we decide to build the half-wave antenna. Move some of these pieces off to the side and we'll get started building. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this tiny capacitor from its packaging and prepare my soldering iron and the small PCB to solder that capacitor into place. It's going to go onto these square pads on the back of the PCB. So let's extract There we go. Now I find the easiest way to do this is to place a small blob of solder on one of the pads, just like that. Take my tweezers, pick up the capacitor, melt the blob of solder, and slide the capacitor into place. Hold it in place until the solder cools. Once we've got one side done, we can tack down the other end of the capacitor, just like this. And that's it. Now for step two, we are going to solder our poly stealth wire, basically our stub to which we are going to attach our antenna wire onto the PCB. I'm not going to use a counterpoise with this build. I typically don't with the end-fed half-wave, so I'm just going to use the piece of poly stealth wire as a whole. But if you do want to build this with a counterpoise, I recommend cutting this so you have about a two-third length piece of wire and one-third length piece of wire. So you've got a short and a long stub and attach your shorter stub to the counterpoise pad attach your longer stub to the antenna pad and that way you can very easily tell which one is which. So how do we attach this? Well, I'm only going to show the one. 
since I'm not building a counterpoise, but uh, we'll start by stripping about an eighth of an inch of insulation off of the end of this piece of poly stealth. Just need a little bit of wire exposed there. And I'm going to flip my board over and find the pad labeled ANT for antenna. And it's this pad here, just below center. And what I want to do is insert this wire into that pad from the back side of the board. I'm going to flip this around, insert that into the proper hole, make sure it's in the right spot, and we'll solder it from the top of the board. There we go. Got the antenna wire soldered into place. My next step is to take the rest of this wire and send it out through this strain relief hole just below the ANT pad. As you get close to the end, it might take a little finesse to get it to not kink. Or damage the insulation. There we go. I now have the wire soldered into place. Step three is a fun one, the dreaded toroid winding. Let's start by unfurling our magnet wire here. Carefully uncoil this. Make sure you don't kink it anywhere. So you don't want to create a weak spot that can potentially cause it to break. Once you've got your magnet wire straightened out, take about three inches and double it over back on itself. And then I usually like to make just a couple of twists right at the end there. We're going to start winding this toroid by taking that wire stub we just created, sending it up through the center. And winding around the outside. To the right of that stub. We need to wind with both of these strands for the first few turns. But you can wind them individually to make your life a little easier. Each one needs to go through the center of the toroid two additional times. And it's okay if those wires cross over each other. There we go. So we've got three turns through the center of the toroid. Each time each one of those wires passes through the center of the toroid, it counts as a turn. So we should have six strands of wire going through the center of the toroid at this point. So now we're going to continue winding this longer strand of wire another 18 turns around the toroid if we're planning to build a 40, 20, 15, 10, and fed half wave. I find a ratio of 3 to 21 works very well with that antenna. 
If you're going to be building an 80 meter, maybe 40 to 80 meter end fed half wave, consider adding a few extra turns on the secondary coil. So you have a total of around 24 turns. So we'll continue winding with the longer wire. Turn number four, five, six, and the final turn, 21. And our toroid is ready. So we've got three primary turns, 21 secondary turns, and I'm gonna go ahead and trim the extra wire here right now. So what we end up with is a stub for the ground, a stub for the beginning of the primary coil where the BNC feed is connected, and a stub for the end of the secondary coil where the antenna wire will be connected. And if you wind it in this proper direction, everything will end up in the right place to easily attach to the PCB. So let's trim those down to about a quarter inch in length. Our next step is aligning these three wires to the proper holes on the PCB and soldering them into place. I'm gonna trim those down a bit further before I solder. So one thing you'll notice is that I did not strip the enamel before inserting it into the PCB. One thing I found with this wire is that the enamel burns off easily enough with a moderately hot soldering iron to where pre-stripping the wire is not necessary. Just hold the soldering iron on there for a few seconds and you get a good solder joint. And now our toroid is attached to the PCB. Our next step is to attach the toroid and PCB assembly to the BNC connector. To do that, we need to bend the toroid slightly away from the PCB so we have some space to work underneath the toroid. Ideally, it should end up about like that, and that'll give us the room we need to solder those lugs into place. So we'll place the BNC connector into the holes on the PCB. The male BNC connectors fit very well. The female connectors, you do have to bend the lugs in slightly to make them fit on these purple PCBs. Unfortunately, the pin setup on the female BNCs is just not the same as the male BNCs. There will be new blue PCBs coming out in the future and that will help alleviate this problem for the female kits. In the meantime, just give them a slight bend inward and you'll be able to insert the lugs into those holes enough to get a good solder joint. Just about like that. So we're building a male BNC kit so I'm going to insert my male BNC into those holes and I generally want it to be inserted about that far, just a little bit into the holes, position the PCB so it just extends past the ends of the BNC lugs and then we're going to go ahead and solder those into place. This is a good time to use flux if you've got it. Make sure you get a good connection there. Make sure we've got a good solder joint there on those lugs. And if you can get at least two of the ground lugs, that's sufficient for strength. Three is even better 
And of course, if you can solder all four, that's fantastic. Don't forget the center conductor lug. So you can see it's a tight fit in there. So I've got three of the four lugs soldered on the ground and the center conductor soldered. I think we'll call that good. Now before you move on to the next step of applying the heat shrink tubing to protect the toroid, you might want to go outside and test the matching unit and tune up a piece of wire just to make sure you've got everything right. Alright, so our final steps here, we're going to add some heat shrink. I'm going to take the small heat shrink and cut it about in half. I'm going to save half of that for soldering my antenna wire to this stub of poly stealth and I'm going to use the other half just as a little piece for strain relief down here by the toroid. I've got my heat gun. Shrink that into place. And then the last step is to take our three quarter inch heat shrink, the smaller section, and secure this entire assembly by placing the heat shrink over the toroid and the PCB, just about like that, and shrinking that into place. Ideally, you want the heat shrink to extend down just below the PCB. You may even need to trim the piece of heat shrink that's in your kit. It might be a bit longer than you want, but you want it to extend below the PCB to help snug that down into place. And you want it to extend up above the toroid on the top side. And there we go, our matching unit is built. All we need to do now is attach uh, about, oh, I like to start with 70 feet of wire to the end of this stub and then start working on tuning. We'll demonstrate that tuning in a separate video. So for now, our job is done. You may recall from my previous videos that I used to pot these with epoxy to give it a little more stability and support. I found that certain epoxies actually affect the tuning of the matching unit. Uh, so if you do want to pot the unit, I recommend using an actual potting compound. Another option is to use some silicone, but know that certain types of silicone may accelerate corrosion and degradation in the unit. So there you have it. Hopefully your matching unit is now built successfully for your end-fed half wave. If you had trouble with the build, if you have a problem, if you're missing parts or lost a part or damaged a part, send me an email, k6arkportableradio at gmail.com, and I will do my best to make sure you are successful in the making of your kit. I want everybody to be successful with these. I want you to have fun with your antenna, and please follow up with me if you have any kind of problems or any questions about your kit. I want to make it right. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I hope you really enjoy your build. Check my YouTube channel for other videos on how to tune up a piece of wire on this matching unit, how to build the kit as a 9 to 1 for a random wire, and how to build the kit as a 1 to 1 ballon for the center of a dipole or another balanced antenna. 7-3 for now from Adam at K6ARK Portable Radio.